stocks could make you a millionaire by 50. We're gonna be going over how we think this is possible in today's video. Now, in order to understand what we're actually going on about, you are gonna to have to have a general understanding of what stocks are and the different ways that you can invest in them. If you don't have this, we'd highly recommend that you check out our Stocks Explained in under five minutes video because it's gonna really quickly get you up to speed. Okay, so assuming that you've done that or you're already familiar with the concept of stocks, we're gonna set the scene for how this video is gonna play out. The demographic that we're gonna be using for our example is the average Joe or the average Jane. That is somebody whose only asset is the job that they're in. We've borrowed from the United States Bureau of Labor Statistics to help us fill out this profile a little bit more. So as of 2018, this is someone who has a post-tax income of around $67,241 and whose expenses every year is sitting at around $61,000 $724, which is allocated into the fields that you see now on screen. The time frame that we're going to be working on here is the full nine yards, so 32 years, which is how long it takes you to become a retired 50 year old from being a young, hopeful 18 year old. Lastly, throughout our example, we are going to be referring a lot to the American stock market, so the S&P 500 index. We're also going to be using American currency and Americans in general because when you tend to compare them to the rest of the world, it's very, very similar in terms of average salaries and expenses and things like that. With all that being said, we're ready to jump into it. Now, this is going to be a long video, so if you do want to just skip ahead to how we think stocks could make you a millionaire by 50, you can do so here. Without further ado, though, folks, Let's dive into it. Dividend investing will not make you a millionaire by 50 according to our research. Using the S&P 500 index as an example, the average dividend yield for this market sits at around 2%, with the highest dividend yield sitting at around 6%. So using the demographic that we were talking about before, let's imagine that over your 32 year investing journey, you were living with your parents for those 32 years. So that 20 something thousand dollars that you would be spending on housing, you're actually able to invest into a dividend yielding fund instead. This is how your investing journey would look. After five years of investing, you would have a principal balance of $100,000. This would generate for you a passive income of $2,000 at a 2% dividend yield and $6,000 at a 6% dividend yield. After 10 years of investing, you would have a principal balance of $200,000. This would generate for you a passive income of $4,000 at a 2% dividend yield and $12,000 at that higher 6% dividend yield. Okay, let's pick it up a wee bit. After 20 years of investing in a dividend yielding fund, this would generate for you a passive income of $8,000 at a 2% dividend yield and $24,000 at that 6% dividend yield. Finally, we've went the entire nine yards, we've went the full 32 years. We would now have a total principal balance of $640,000. This would generate for you a $12,800 passive income at the 2% dividend yield and an impressive $38,400 at that 6% dividend yield. Now we've hit the deadline at this point. So if you were to retire at 50, you would still need to reinvest that dividend for another 10 years before you could become a millionaire. Compound this with the fact that companies don't actually have to pay you a dividend. They can instead choose to reinvest what they would pay you as a dividend back into the company to increase the value of the overall company. While this might not work in your interest, this certainly works in the interest of day traders. And speaking of day traders, trading stock or picking stock is not going to make you a millionaire by 50 according to our research. Now hold on, hold on, put the pitchforks down. Let me walk you through why we think this is the case. Over the last 32 years, the average return from the S&P 500 index market was sitting at around 12.27%. When you are picking individual stocks or having others pick individual stocks for you, your main aim here is to beat that market return. Now for the people wanting to do that or people thinking that they can do that, 
we do have some bad news for you. This comes in the form of a report that is released by the S&P 500 indices called the SPIVA scorecard. The SPIVA scorecard basically shows that as of 2020, over the last five years, 75.27% of all mutual funds were unable to beat the market return. Another report released by the S&P 500 indices entitled the Persistence Scorecard shows that out of the 24.73% of mutual funds that were able to beat the market return across five years, only 4.8% of them were able to do so consecutively over a four year period. This means that statistically speaking, if we were to stretch that out to around a 10 year period, basically 0.0% of mutual funds would be able to consistently defeat the market return. Now, when we talk about mutual funds, what we're really talking about here is professional investors. These are lads and ladies who spend from nine o'clock in the morning till five o'clock at night researching stocks, performing a qualitative analysis on stocks, performing a quantitative analysis on stocks, and then making decisions based on that. So if we look back at our demographic that we are using for this example, which is your average Jew or your average Jane who might be working in construction or working in an office job, these are people that are probably going to be researching stocks maybe two hours at most after work or maybe, maybe a couple of hours on the weekend. If mutual funds in general cannot beat the return of the market, then what hope do us everyday people have? In terms then of being unable to defeat the market, this becomes very difficult to try and plan out a 32 year strategy. It's easy to look at the performance of the stock market in the past and say, okay, well, if the stock market has been up more than it's been down, then chances are over the next 32 years, that pattern should at least continue. However, it's very difficult on the opposite side a lot to look at 500 stocks and say, I know for definite that this stock is gonna be doing really well and that this stock alone is going to outperform the market. While one could technically argue that maybe somebody could beat the mutual funds and beat the market over, you know, 32 years and thus become a millionaire by 50 free day trading, we think it's highly, highly unlikely based on the statistics that we've saw. There's just too much variables and there's just too much risk. Not to mention if you spend four hours looking into a stock, you're going to want that to be worth something and that's where emotion then comes into it. And don't get us wrong, stocks are an emotional game. Therefore, and for these reasons, while there might be many people who disagree with us, we truly believe that just trading stocks will not make you a millionaire by 50. So if statistics say that you can't beat the market, then what can you do? How can you plan out a strategy to become a millionaire by 50 through stocks? Well, it's like that saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. Investing in index funds could make you a millionaire by 50. So if we look at the example that we provided before, which shows that the average return of the S&P 500 index over the last 32 years was 12.27%, we can run with a bit of a strategy here. So let's say you invested in an index fund that tracks the performance of the market and tries to duplicate that return. We're going to create three different profiles from the demographic that we outlined before to illustrate how this could play out. So profile one is the one that we've used before. So this is the living with your parents profile. This assumes that over your 32 year investing journey, you never move out of home, you live with your parents, and that money that you would otherwise be charged for, say rent or mortgage, is instead reinvested in its entirety into the stock market. Not only this, but Every year that return you get from the stock market at 12.27% on your principal, you're reinvesting that amount as well. Our second profile is what we call the savvy saver profile. So this is the one where you may have had to move out of home, unfortunately, you're maybe renting with a couple of friends or maybe you've got a mortgage with your partner. You're not able to save up quite as much as the stay at home profile, but you are able to save around half that investing half of that every single year in the stock market alongside whatever return the stock market gives you on that principle. Our final profile is the spare change profile. This is for the type of person who maybe isn't too interested in stocks, wants to give it a wee go, but doesn't want to invest too much time or money into it. 
Let's have a look and see how that would have performed over the last 32 years with a market average return of 12.27%. So with the living with your parents profile, the first year your $20,091 compounds to $22,556 thanks to that 12.27% return. In year two, you're reinvesting your $20,091 again, but thanks to that 12.27% return, it's also jumping up a little bit more to $47,879. Now this remains pretty unremarkable up until you get to around year 12. So from pretty much year 12 onwards, you're still only investing $20,091 a year. However, your principal balance is now going up 100k a year basically thanks to that 12.27 percent return and from this point on it really does take off by the end of this 32 year period you are not a millionaire by 50 you are a multi-millionaire by 50. let's have a look then at how our savvy saver goes so your initial investment of ten thousand forty five dollars at the end of year one becomes $11,277, thanks to that 12.27% return. Nothing too special there, but again, when we get to year 17 in this example, even though you are still only investing around $10,045 per year, your principal balance is actually going up by around 100K each year. At the end of your investment journey, again, you are not a millionaire by 50, you are a multi-millionaire by 50. Finally, let's have a look at our spare change profile and see how they do. The journey starts out pretty unremarkable at the beginning, but towards the end becomes quite substantial. Now, you don't quite become a millionaire by 50 on this profile, but you do get pretty close for only investing $2,030 per year into the stock market. So that seems pretty remarkable, right? I'm guessing at this stage, you probably wanna run out and invest in the first index fund that you can find, which matches the S&P 500 index. Well, we would caution against that because we haven't been entirely truthful with you throughout this video. The examples that we've shown you before are very similar to the examples that are usually in financial textbooks that talk about stocks. They use the same language to illustrate how powerful the stock market can be to compound your returns. But what these examples don't take into consideration is how the stock market actually works. We can easily say that the re average return from the stock market over the last 32 years was X amount. But this is of course just an average. It's not indicative of the true highs and the true lows of the stock market and what that would actually look like on your investment. We have another example for you, which is how these free profiles actually would have performed if they had have invested in the stock market 32 years ago. For the living at home profile, you would have enjoyed your first two years of investing, but by year three, you'd be questioning your choices because the stock market crashed. Now, if you were questioning your choices then, Imagine what you would have been thinking when it got to the year 1999. From 1999 up until 2003, between this period, the stock market crashed every year. And every year, it crashed harder than the year before. Now, while the end of this financial journey still would see you becoming a millionaire by 50, as would, again, the financial journey for the savvy saver, what we really wanna illustrate through this example is stocks can be a roller coaster. Before investing or even thinking about investing in an index fund, we want you to put yourself in the shoes of somebody who is facing the stock market pre-1999. If the stock market was to crash three years in a row and you've got all your money tied up in there, would you be able to stick it out? Or would you pull your money out? Because if you would pull your money out, this whole strategy would go to shit and you would not become a millionaire by 50. Well, it can be great to live in a fantasy that we can just throw money into index funds and that will make you a millionaire. We also have to live with the reality that past performance is not indicative of future performance. And while over the last 32 years, the stock market has survived things like terrorist attacks and disease and wars and stuff like that, 
Who's to say that global warming won't just wreck us all and the stock market might crash 10 years in a row or 15 years in a row. So there it is. That's the theory that we have on how stocks could make you a millionaire by 50. It's not sexy. It's not attractive. It's pretty much very boring. It's like setting your money into a savings account only with lots more risk. If you were looking for something a bit more exciting, if you were really wanting to fuck your life up in fantastic style, we highly recommend that you check out our video where we go over short selling. This is what the cowboys over at Wall Street Bets like to do. And this is where you can really, you know, earn some massive gains, but you could also completely ruin your life. We'll leave that up to you. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like. Please also subscribe. It really helps us to continue producing content like this. It also helps us do our research and have more time to do research. Thanks, everybody. Keep it real and increase the pace. I'll catch you all next time.